This tutorial is going to show you how to do chi-square tests in R. I'll show you not only how to get the test statistic itself, I'll show you how to create the crosstabs tables, getting percentages or just getting the row data or just the column data and so on. I'll also show you how to produce an effect size, some real basic graphs and also a way you can run chi-squares on subsets of data as well. As usual, there's some packages that we need to install. Um, these are already installed on mine. You'd have to do it each time you open R. So we'll need the read Excel package, the CGP functions, that'll do our graphs. LSR will do Kramers and the PLYR we'll, we'll use for our subsetting. That's a very commonly used um, package that allows you to do a lot of manipulations in the data set. But of course, we need to read in all those packages. So the data that we're going to get, which you can find in the link below this video, and there's actually some open source data that I got from downloaded directly from the um, New York Police Department. The data looks at homicides across all the different boroughs of New York. I've made a redacted simple version of the data set for this example here. So I'm just going to read that data in. And remember, in your case, you're just going to have to change where your data sits. And this is what the data. So I've just made this really basic. And we're looking at the borough, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and I believe Staten Island as well. Yep, yeah, and Staten Island as well. And we're just looking at the victim sex, whether they are female or male as you can see this is absolutely huge data set it spans a great many years um, and as i say it's freely available online with a lot more variables in it than this as well so we're just going to attach that data set so now we can search for the variable column so for border and sex so what we want to do is produce a chi-squared table and then we want to get some statistics for it, particularly the chi-square test statistic, p-value and so on, and we'll get an effect size for that as well. To do that, we're going to create a data frame, which we'll just call New York. And we want a table for a by victim sex. That's all we need to do to begin with. So the one that appears first of so Bora will be rows and the one that appears second will be columns. So if you run that, it won't actually do anything. That's for our table. We want that for New York. Now if you run that, here's our table. And as you can see, this is the frequency counts for the different boroughs, for females and for males. So in the Bronx, in this data set, there's 542 female murder victims, 5,849 males, and so on. So you can see in all boroughs, it's substantially more male murder victims than females. So if you want some actual test statistics for this, you can ask for a summary. And the summary is just for New York. Now, if we run that, here we go. And as you can see, it's produced our chi-squared test. It's our chi-squared test statistic, it's degrees of freedom, and it's p-value. And we can just write this up accordingly. We'd write our chi-squared with degrees of freedom, then report the chi-squared statistic, and then what our p-value is. That's part of our job done. Just something to note though, look at the size of this data set. There's 22,000 cases in this data set. And we've got a p-value of 0 0.046 if you round that. So with those, that's statistically significant. It's not the most meaningful thing in the world because p-values are very reliant on sample size, bigger sample, smaller your p-value is gonna be. And so we should also be re reporting our effect size with this. So we've already read it in LSR, so we just need to ask for the Kramer's B function, and we just ask that for New York. So now we run that, what's our Kramer's V? 0 
two, zero. So we've got a tiny effect size here. So although we get a statistically significant effect here, it's essentially meaningless within the context of this huge data set. The effect size is absolutely tiny. So actually there's pretty much consistency across the boroughs in the number of females and male victims. What if you want to report descriptive statistics just for the number of murders across each of our boroughs? Well, to do that, we can just ask margin table, and then we just say put it for New York, and then comma one. So this will give us for our borough, first one in that list there, Click down here. And there we go for the borough from murders in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, and Staten Island. And of course, if you just want to see the sex of the victims, you can just say margin table, New York, comma two. So I'll give it for our columns, and there we go number of female and the number of male murder victims. Of course, raw scores like that may not be the thing that you want you may want to look percentages or proportions you can ask for a proportional table it's just because everything is a proportion and you can just convert this directly into percentage so we just write prop table new york we run that there we go we've got the table now as a proportion these are percentages really so these are just the proportions so we add all these up and it would add up to one so in the bronx let's see for example of all the victims in this entire sample 26 percent of this entire sample were males killed in the bronx 57 percent were males killed in brooklyn 11 percent males killed in manhattan 13 percent males in queens and so on so what we've done there is we've just got the percentages the entire sample broken down by sex and by the borough but we could just ask for the proportions within each of the categories as well and i'll show you what i mean by this so basically we just copy them and we ask for proportional tables like that proportional table new york comma one if you just run that now so what this table gives us is gives us a proportion within each of our boroughs number one so our rows to the proportion in each borough so within the bronx just over eight percent are female and just over 91 percent are male so that would add up to one, so 100% basically. And within Brooklyn, just over 9% are female, just under 91% are male, and so on. So we can also get our percentages that way around as well. Or of course, we could ask for a proportional table, comma two. So this will give us, of all the females, um, homicide victims, 26% of them are in the Bronx, 41% were in Brooklyn, 12% Manhattan, 15% in Queens, and about 3-4% in Staten Island, and then you can see the same pattern within the males, 28% Bronx, 41% Brooklyn, 12% Manhattan, 14% Queens, 2% Staten Island. So we can also get our percentage breakdowns done in that manner as well. So as well as just reporting data like that, we could give some simple figures as well. There's lots of different ways to use figures. There's probably better ways than this. This is just a simple function I've used before. CGP functions. So we've already pulled that in from our library. So we can just say plot and cross tabs. And we can just ask for data for a by sex we can run that and then 
there we go. We can see you've got Borough, Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island, and males and females. Of course, it may be better to actually do this the other way around. So if we swap the order. Split it like that. Let's have this one and we could stack it instead. So we just simply ask for it as a stack. So there we go. So instead of putting them side by side, we put the number of females on top of the number of male victims. Or instead we could ask for percentage plot. So let's just plot type percent. So that does in each case 100% of cases and it breaks it down as you can see it's pretty consistent slightly more for example females proportionally to males in Staten Island compared to the Bronx but generally speaking the pattern is pretty consistent and um, which really does illustrate the why the chi squared is such a big sample size gives a significant result when actually when you look at that you can't see anything that convincing in the results maybe though you were only interested in two places maybe just interested in the Bronx and Staten Island for example so maybe you want to analyze that instead well to do that we can use DP LIR. So we've already pulled that in, and let's just say let's just call our let's call it new New York. So what's that going to be? It's going to be my chi squared data. And I'm going to add a filter to it. Bore it has to equal, it's got to be the same as Bronx and then I want two different ones so put in that line there so that's not a one or an L or anything like that it's an actual line that's been added we can also say for a let's see the same as Staten Island. Okay, so that will basically say I'm going to filter it and I only want things in which the Bore is the Bronx, the Bore is Staten Island. And we can attach. So. so, let's say I want to do some reanalysis. Well, the reanalysis really is that let's call it new new york just to avoid say any confusion i'm just adding the word new again so on a new table for a by victim sex what's going to be pulling in this now and it's going to be called new new york and there you go so the borough is the bronx or staten island and male and female victims if i want a summary of it there we go we see our chi square and our p value is smaller than it was before as i say i did choose the two cases as you can saw from the graph we looked at earlier which is the most extreme difference between the two but again if we just get our kramers up we can see the effect sizes if you write to do decimal places 0 0.03 so it's still absolutely tiny effect we could graph our data as well. This new set, so we do plus cross tabs. Now, this time we're going to take it from this data set, new NY, Bora, victim sex. And we can run that. And there we go. So, our Bora by victim sex. There, so you can see Bronx and Staten Island, the differences male and females. Now, 
as I say, just like before. You may wish to do it the other way around. So we'd have victim sex. Or uh, so let's let's do it as a percentage. And again, this is just like before, and there you can see the differences next to each other. So they produce our statistically significant effect, but the differences are absolutely minor within that. So all these these commands can work on all different data sets, obviously. So again, you know, when you do these things, you really only have to do these things once, and then you just need to change it for the data that you're going to be looking at. So the script here can be found below this video, along with the data, there's some annotations on the script as well, so you can work through that yourself.